It sure is good to be back in church. I'm glad each and every one of you are here this morning. Uh, I've got a lesson I feel like is very important, and it's leading. Uh, we're we're going to pick up where we left off. Uh, there's an ordination in God's Word, a set of order, and He's put it in order for specific reasons. Now, I don't know, those that are older, like me, can probably remember the times that your mom or dad would say something to you as a child, say, you do this, and you say, well, why do I have to do that? And what was the answer they used to give you? Because I said so. And that's all that mattered. And that's all that matters in this process. Our society is just screaming, saying this is old-fashioned. It's fundal, 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 how do you say that word? Say that again. Fundamental, yeah, that word. <sighs> Say it again, but without the L-Y. Fundam fundamental. It's fundamental. It, it's it's, it's, it's old-fashioned. It doesn't work in our society. People can choose if they want to be homosexual or heterosexual, and it's none of your business. Uh, they can choose their own gender now. They can choose whether they will keep the law or disobey the law, and there's no punishment, no recompense. Uh, good morning, y'all. They've even gone so far as to begin to say what we can and, and cannot preach according to God's Word, and we're going to correct God's Word. There's even churches that have marked certain things out of their Bibles and changed the Bible to suit their liking. They don't have a Bible no more. It's a book. Uh What I want to look at is crossing God's deadline. And it's a very somber. Now, in Sunday school, we looked at the mercy and grace and the light that God gives us. He gives us this light that we can expose the darkness. We can expose. And look, it really comes down... <laughs> to our sinfulness, which is our nakedness. All right, that's why we always want to cover and hide and be in the dark where nobody can see our wickedness. And that's what it is. Our sin and stuff is wickedness. There's a bunch of issues that I want to... But he gives us this ordination, and there's, we're, we're coming to a deadline. And, and I'm concerned for all of us, myself included, because... We've, we've skirted the issues and, and played games because we act like there's always tomorrow. That's arrogant on our part. There's not always a tomorrow. And just because something's been the same for over 200 years like our nation doesn't mean it's going to carry on even until tomorrow. You know, we think that our government and our, our way of life cannot change. It can change overnight. I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm trying to scare you. What I'm trying to do really is to show, share the light so that you can see. Let's back up to World War II. They came in and they bombed Pearl Harbor. It changed everything in America, especially for those people in Hawaii, didn't it? short time later, we dropped the, the only two atomic bombs that's ever been dropped on a, a nation and even on civilian population. 
Do you think after they bombed Pearl Harbor, they really was worried about their way of life going to change over there in Nagasaki? Nope. Surprise! What are you saying? You, you're for war? I, no. I'm not even talking about war. I'm just trying to get you to see with history, things can change quick. Crossing God's deadline can happen quick. If you will, turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter 29, verse 1. He that being often reproved hardened, hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Uh, what did I say? That's wrong. It's Proverbs. <laughs> It's the other P one right next door. Come on, can't y'all read? Thank you. I'm sorry, y'all. It's this earpiece. <clears throat> when? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He that been, okay, are y'all there now finally? Did y'all finally find that place in the Bible? He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Okay. So you won't think I'm hard. Let's back up and look at the big picture. We have an enemy that hates us. We know what God has laid out before us as, as time goes and what's going to happen one day. One day, that beautiful blue sky is going to roll back like a scroll. And behind that beautiful blue sky is going to be a light so white that human eyes ain't going to behold it. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the mortals will be changed to immortals. There's a trump of the archangel that's going to blow. And I think we're going to hear what John the Revelator heard in Revelation. He's going to hear the trumpet speaking to him, calling him by name, and say, come up thither. I don't know if they'll use the word thither or not, but that's what they use in the King James. So thitherly we'll be there. But are you ready? Here, see, in verse 1 it says, He that being often reproved hardened his neck. Satan is our enemy. It says he seeks whom he may devour. He's walking around like a roaring lion. And we know how lions feed. I've tried to teach you that. They want to find the weak, the old, the fat, the feeble, the babies, the ones that's fearful, and get them separated from the herd. So they can sink the claws in and devour that one. We see our society working in the same manner because who does our society actually work for? Who is the powers and principalities of the air? Ever since the Garden of Eden, it has been... Lucifer, because Adam gave that control over to him when we took of the forbidden fruit. So that authority was given. Now Christ is going to reclaim it one day. He's already took the keys from hell and death from Satan. But the authority here is still running under the principalities of darkness. They want to separate us. They want to cause fear. Let me ask you a question. Ever since this pandemic started, now look, I know people's dying, but not at the numbers they've said. Is your family the same? 
is your family the same? I'm going to tell you no. Our families look at each other different now. They don't like hugs and kisses like they used to. You know what will kill you? Not getting hugs and kisses. That will kill you. They have all these Russian babies in these orphanages. They don't ever touch the babies. Americans go over there and adopt these babies and bring them back. But the first year, these babies are never hugged and loved. You know what? They never change. They're not loving people. And you can't ever, no matter how much love you pour into them, it's something about the human touch. You know, in the very beginning of time, when God looked at Adam, what did he say? It is not good for man to be alone. We all think that we're great loners and we'll do better on our own. That is not true. And we have to take care of each other. We have to look out for each other. Why do you think he tells us to fellowship ourselves together? Can you worship God when you're in your car? Yeah, sure can. Can you worship him while you're at work? Yes. Can they stop me from any of my jobs or anywhere I go from praying? Nope. Not until they can get a chip in my head and know when I'm praying. Because I can pray anywhere. I don't have to necessarily be kneeling. Can I kneel? Yes, I can kneel. Do I kneel? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I pray out loud. Sometimes I pray in silence. But God hears my prayers. God will hear your prayers. Where are you going with this, Skip? Well, we have an enemy that wants to kill us. Uh, actually, we're coming into a place finally. You're going to start seeing proofs start coming out. They're already starting to come out on both sides of the media because they cannot help it. The truth is always the truth. And it's always, because it is part of the light, it will always expose the darkness and the wickedness. We have people that's being manipulated by Satan that is trying to destroy our country. And they've been doing it for a long time. And like they're even talking about it now on the mainstream news, on your regular channels that you get on your local stations without satellite and everything, about the World Economic Forum and wanting to change us into a socialist type nation. Now it all sounds wonderful. Now you say, Skip, why are you in politics? This has nothing to do with politics. This has to do about God and who's, who you're going to trust. Our society has given us a bunch of misinformation is what they're calling it. You want me to tell you the true word that you need to use about this misinformation? Lie. It's the great lie. Now who is the father of lies? What does the word say? Satan. Let me tell you, rest assured, Hebrews 9.27 is true. It is appointed once for man to die. You don't get reincarnated. There's no karma. So if you've been bad, you're going to come at, back as a snail or something like that. Once. And after the appointment with death is made, then the judgment. Either you knew Jesus Christ or you did not know Jesus Christ. If you knew him, you're saved. If you did not know him, you're not saved. Some people think that they are saved and that they know him. When they meet him, he's going to say, Workers of iniquity, depart from me, for I never knew you. They'll say, Lord, didn't we heal many people in your name? Didn't we do this? We went to church every Sunday. He's going to say, I didn't know you. See, Pharisees and Sadducees, are religious people. They were looking for Messiah when Christ came. They looked him in the eyes and said, are you him? And he says, I am he. 
And they said, crucify him. He blasphemes. Truth was standing right before them. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. They knew the Father, they said. They had his word that says Jesus is coming, and they missed Jesus Christ standing right in front of them. Now they've got Lucifer loose here, and he's running around on all the media platforms, and he's telling us we need to be afraid and we're all going to die. Jesus is coming again soon. Hallelujah, Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming to rescue us. Well, we can't go to church. We might get sick and die. I have a mansion just waiting for me. Do you really believe that? Why are you afraid of the portal that we're going to walk through? Let's quit being afraid and start living to praise God. You know, I personally, I'm not talking as your preacher, I'm talking as Skip. I want to die well. I've not ran a very good race. I want to finish well. So if my government says, either deny Christ or we're going to kill you, I say, cut my head off. Because I'm not going to deny Christ. Well, we're going to kill your family. Well, then you better get at it. Because I am serving Christ. I am going to die well at the very best that I can do. I want to be able to say it is finished and I've ran the race. You understand? We are nearing the end of our races. Even if it's not the end of the time, do you understand? People our age are nearing the end of our race. All right? It's nothing to be sad about. Have you not enjoyed what God has blessed you to this point? Hallelujah, I've enjoyed my life. I wish I'd done some things different that I'm ashamed of. But nevertheless, God gets the glory because he delivered me through some of those. And he shed the light upon them so I could expose it for what it was. What I want you to see is we have a lot of people that is still buying all the garbage, all the lies that everything's being spewed. And this is what happens in 29 verse 1 of not Psalms, but Proverbs. Look what it says. He that being often reproved hardened his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Can a person spiritually pass the point of no return? Yes. Yes. Now, can you do that after you've been saved? No. But you're not going to be able to. Because if you're saved and you're not doing right and God is, is, is jerking your chain trying to get your attention, I believe what Donnie has often said, he'll shut your lights out. It'll be your time. You come on home. You're not going to do right. You ain't going to stay down there and mess things up. You get on up here to the house. He will destroy the flesh in order to save the soul. If you're a child of the light, you're, you're gonna, God is going to get a hold of you. Now, I'm worried. Now, I got the list, and I think I've got everybody's name on the roll call. So I'm going to call them off, and for you that's here, praise God. And for those that we read off that's not here, would you pray for them? Would you actually take the time this week to try to call one of them or two of them and say we miss you? Don't be, don't be all hyper judgmental. You are no one to judge. All right? But they need to know the truth and they need to come back. Their heart is getting hardened in the world. Their neck is getting stiff. And according to Proverbs, it will come a time that their neck will not bend no more. Their heart will not mend. We need their heart mended. We need them back strong. We need them serving the Lord. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your throne room of mercy and grace. And Lord, we know we can come boldly into this 
this throne room because of the blood of Jesus Christ, and we thank you for that. But we also come to you uh, asking for forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness for listening to doesn't matter who anything above your word I know what your word says it speaks it very plainly and when and you've gave me a mind that I can open this word and read it and, and have understanding and yet I'll I'll listen to people that I will call uh, experts over the God of the universe please forgive me and you've put me in a position to lead men and women according to your truth and instead of using that truth at times I've considered myself an expert of what people did and didn't need and I would withhold uh, not wanting to offend or hurt and sometimes to the greatest detriment of the people I was trying to protect to start with. Please forgive me, forgive this church for not watching after all the, the people that's been through here. Lord, this, this list here is many, but I'm sure that if we really went down through the list that we've had over the years, that this would only be a, a small fraction of the people that's been through here. And Lord, while we didn't want to seem to pester and follow after and, and hound on people, that's exactly what some of them need. And we failed them. We asked for forgiveness. I asked for forgiveness. And I'm asking as, as a church, but I'm also asking for myself mostly, Lord, because I know what I should have been doing, but I don't like people to be mad at me. The truth of the matter is, uh, would I rather them be mad at me or you? Lord, we, we, we say we're going to heaven and we got Jesus, and yet we, we run around and wring our hands and just, <laughs> instead of anointing ourselves with oil and going forth in your name and your power, we pour the alcohol on top of us, hoping it disinfects us so we don't get sick and die. The very thing that gives us entrance into heaven in your presence <laughs> would you forgive us for our weakness our stupidity our ignorance our lack of faith for each person here this morning i know this was not much of a sermon but it's your truth has been laid very heavy on my heart for weeks and satan has done his best to keep this message from coming forth Dear Heavenly Father, help us with love and mercy reach out to all the people, all the members of our family that's supposed to be here that's neglecting. And may we love on them and encourage them. And Lord, if we have to, call them out for what it is. It's an excuse for the most part of laziness to do what they want instead of your will. And that's what scares me about Proverbs 29.1. The net gets hard and it's not going to be turned back to you. Lord, don't let us lose people to Satan or to lies. Let us be able to offer the truth, expose the light that's yours to the ones that are being deceived with the lies. It's being propagated by Satan through, Lord, through, through all the social media, through doctors, uh, governments. And Lord, it's just not this. That's why I know. That's why we know. That's why we know, Lord, that this is not just a political thing going on. This is a global thing that Lucifer is trying to take over the world completely once again. And they'll say, oh, conspiracy theory. It's not conspiracy when it comes true. Dear Lord, help us as only you can. Watch this congregation of people. Dear Lord, let us be 
ever joyful because you've redeemed us. You've broke the curse of sin and death by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. We thank you and praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to finish where we started. And no, not in Psalms, but in Proverbs. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed. And that without remedy, without hope, without repentance, without change. It says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. If the, the sky was to start splitting and the white light starts coming out from behind the blue sky, would you say, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, come quickly? Or would you need to get on your knees and say, Lord, please forgive me? Lord, help my unbelief. If you need prayer this morning, if you want me to pray with you, come over on this side. If you want to meet with the Lord yourself and pray for others uh, or privately, then come over here and we'll let you have your peace with the Lord. John, if you'll come up and lead us in a song of invitation. There is a, there is a deadline. And, and the Lord, you know, they kept tra- telling Jesus, uh, do this and do that. And he says, not yet my time, not yet my time. There's coming that deadline, that time. My question to you is, are you ready? Is there somebody that you need to talk to? Or do you need to ask for forgiveness so your heart will rest easy? Don't have a stiff neck. Be mendable. That way you don't break. You will stand to your feet, Brother Johnny. Brother, oh, why do you tarry so long? Your Savior is waiting to give a place in a sacred white throne. Why not?